So in today's video, we're going to be talking about investing in the current Trail Browser promo team. So just for the video does start a quick little ad on a trading service I offer over on Twitch for the cheapest trading guides out there for just £4, €4 Euro, or free with Amazon Prime. You'll receive daily trading and investing guides covering PlayStation, Xbox and PC with an array of methods covering all budgets. And I've been trading for over 10 years, making over 100 million in multiple different FIFAs. And now for the last four years, I've made 10 million coins in just the first month. So here is the promo team. And again, we've got a few things to go through. We're gonna go through one, which are good investments, two, when to invest them, three, when to sell them. Happy days. So first off, let's go and talk about which of these are good investments. Now, as always, how we decide what are good investments is we go to this bit, we go to this bit, we then go here, we then go here, and we go here. And what's this gonna do is this is gonna show us the most used trailblazers. Now, believe it or not, this is an amazing way of deciding which players to go and buy because let's look at RTK Team 2. The most used RTK Team 2 was Modric. Now, obviously Modric, yes, has a link investment to like to Bellingham, but he's performed amazingly. Di Maria has been a little bit ropey, but that's because of the SBCs. João Pedro, 250 to 325 already. Klaus, again, needed a price range, so that was a little bit scuffed. Suzoko, I believe, has gone... Four, what was it, like 48 or something like that? No, sorry, 60, I think we're doing 58 to 72 already. So this is an amazing way of deciding which ones are good to go for, because again, Akuna did very well. Whereas you look at the lower players, these guys have not performed very well. So using the way of how many games players have been used is a great way of deciding who to go for. So the best investments here are going to be Di Lorenzo, Ruben Diaz, Mkhitaryan, and then if we look at the minor release, we should see the likes of Matoma and Gaia also playing or, you know, doing very, very well. So those are going to be the five players we're going to go and invest in. When are we going to go and invest in them? Now, it's a bit of an interesting trend because this promo may be less comparable to RTTK and more comparable to last year's Rule Breaker. Now, the reason for this is because the RTTK, of course, the longer they're out of packs, the closer they're playing their next Road to the Knockout stage game, which means the closer they are to getting upgraded. But obviously, these cards don't get upgraded. Now, last year, the first promo we had after RTTK was Rule Breakers. So we've got the players like Ribery. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go and show you how these players reacted. Don't worry, I've already done my pre-research on these, so I know exactly how they're all going to react. Um, let's grab PK there, Phillips there. Who's the expensive one? I think it was Ronaldo. So if we go and look at Zaha, um, so the previous trend with RTKs were that, they, were that they were the cheapest before Division Rival Rewards, they were the cheapest after Marky Matchups, and they're the cheapest on Friday. And that actually follows uh, a lot of these guys' trends. Zaha right here we can see was the cheapest on Thursday. Now interesting enough, he didn't really rise much between Thursday and Friday, and then he held in price until Sunday. And then after Sunday, he was rising and rising and rising. If we then go to the likes of Fek here, we can see the same sort of trend happened right here. We can see that he was the cheapest on Thursday, didn't rise too much, but then started rising really well as of Monday. We then can head to the likes of PK, and again, we can see that PK was the cheapest. Um, cheapest here on Monday, but in reality, I probably would have looked to buy him on the Thursday. And then, unlike some of the others, PK actually rose really well out of packs, uh, and he rose there until the following Friday. And then we had underwear Benucci, and again, I believe Benucci might have been a link investment. Uh, cheapest on the Thursday, rose a little bit there, and then he rose after the week. But again, that would have been a link investment. And then get the likes of Calvin Phillips, again, the cheapest on Thursday, then rose really nicely out of packs. Uh, Fakir, I think we've already looked at. And uh, yeah, so they basically the cheap, the trend was that they're the cheapest on the Thursday and the Friday, and then they didn't, well, some rose really well out of packs initially, some took until Monday to rise. But there's a very interesting trend right here on Ronaldo, and that is that Ronaldo was the, this is him on Thursday, but then he went down over the weekend. Now the reason that Ronaldo went down over the weekend is unlike RTKs where, yes, players in RTK Team 2 could have dropped players in RTK 1, because there was the incentive of the long gear hold, you know, the closer you are to the next upgrade, that doesn't happen with rule breakers. It's not like you went and hold this card for a week and it becomes a 92. So what that means is that means that there is less stuff to counter people wanting to sell him to go and buy players in rule breakers teams too. Because what people would have done is they would have gone and sold Ronaldo because they would have gone, do you know what, Ronaldo's good, but I fancy trying this ribbery. And then as a result, again, people sold the Ronaldo and he went down in price. Now he did rebound as of, um, what is it, as of the, I think it might be the Monday, Oh no, sorry, uh, he dropped Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, he rebounded as of the Monday, but initially what happened was there was more panic selling on him because they wanted to try the new cards than him rising. Uh, and that didn't really happen with the other players, but what it did happen was it hindered them rising, hindered like half of them rising until Monday because you had the initial, you know, I'm not going to go and buy these players out of packs. I want to try the new cards. And then when you got to Monday, 
then they started rising. So as a result, um, as a result, basically the buy time is the same as last, uh, you know, with RTKs. But what it's going to be is it's not going to be a potential really, really good rise, which we've seen on the RTKs from Friday to Monday. What it might be is it might be a bit of a stagnant over the weekend. And then once the weekend's done, just like how we see every single week, three weeks in a row now, the market will rise as a Saturday or rise, rise as a Sunday going into the Monday and the Tuesday. And that's when we could expect to see maybe the vast majority of their rises. So when do you want to go and sell these cards? Now, if we look at these last uh, last week, they actually peaked. It will be the equivalent of not this up and coming Friday, but the Friday after that. So again, not this Friday. So it's basically like 10 days time. He peaked basically 10 days after he went out of packs. Calvin Phillips peaked, give or take 10 days. Actually, Calvin Phillips, yeah, no, peaked on the Wednesday, but then he also had a peak on the Friday. So again, would be the equivalent of about 10 days time. Uh, we then look at Zaha, once again the Friday as well. Now the reason uh, for this is because we would have had a new promo. So obviously this week we have Trailblazers Team 1. This Friday we're going to get Trailblazers Team 2. But whatever promo we get after Trailblazers is what caused uh, Rule Breakers last year to basically start dropping. And it makes sense because sometimes there's a different promo and people want to try these promo players in terms of them having a new concept. Obviously Trailblazers, some of these had um, playstyle pluses. Maybe the next one's going to have position changes. And as a result, people are like, oh, well, you know, I didn't mind holding my Rule Breakers for one week because, you know, Trailblazer Team 2 is not going to be any difference in terms of the concept of Trailblazer Team 1. But if we're going to get a position change promo the next week, People want to go and try that promo. So that's what I could basically see happening. So if you do go and buy these Trailblazers, uh, you are going to want to go and sell them. Not this Friday, but the following Friday. Or if you want to buy excessively, say if you're going to sell them, uh, I guess not tomorrow, but the following Tuesday. Just because Tuesday has been the peak day, because uh, we have started seeing panic selling happen on the Wednesday, Thursday and Friday for two weeks in a row. So Tuesday, if you want to go and play it safe, if not, you're going to go and sell it in about 10 days of next Friday. And I believe that is all she wrote. Um, in terms of the minor league players, because someone uh, earlier asked me, is there any sort of players you can go and buy in just club stock? Now, so far we haven't really seen any of the minor league players do that well, other than David Neres. But if you did want to go and pick up, again, players in the off leagues, so like um, Kirona and Nicola, if we go and get ourselves maybe some really good WSN, NSL, uh, SBCs, we could see her potentially doing well. Obviously, you've got the likes of Wagner if you wanted to go MLS, or the likes of Acosta if you wanted to go MLS. And again, you've got Henderson if you wanted to go for the Saudi League. But, of course, it's going to be by then, and we can never guarantee when they're going to come in. But if you did just want to go and buy stuff and basically club stock, hoping for a rainy day, and that rainy day produces an MLS, SBC, or co., well, then they can do pretty, pretty well. And I believe that is about all she wrote. Um, so just quick recap. By time is going to go and be a Thursday before Division Rivals. If not, we're going to look for Thursday after Mikey matchups. And if you want to risk it, you can go Friday with a panic selling. I don't think there's any mad hurry to buy. As in, if you don't see a drop after Division Rivals or before Division Rivals, if you don't see a drop after Mikey matchups, I do think you could see some good panic selling on Friday. Because what I was saying earlier is we might not see these cards rise that well until Sunday, Monday. So I wouldn't go and panic buy them if they've gone up and you've scared, you've missed your opportunity invested in them as such. Um, the bio players again are going to be Mkhitaryan. Because, again, these players are the most used. It can be Mkhitaryan, Di Lorenzo, Diaz, Gaia, and the likes of Matoma. And uh, your sell time is going to be, again, basically the Tuesday after they go out of packs. Or if you want to gamble it, you can go for the Friday. But that has been that. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow with a brand new video.